For attacks that are going to be created often, things like bullets, or in this case, the attack info, you don't want to instantiate and destroy every time you need them. It would be better to get them from a pool of objects, and when you're done using them, put them back into the pool so you can use it again later. So I want to create a pooling system, and I want to create a new folder. Call it pooled objects. And I want to find the attack info folder and drag it into the pooled objects folder. I'm just organizing. Now I'm going to create a new C sharp script and call it pull object loader. Make the namespace. And this is the code that's going to load all the pooled objects. And I'm going to first create an enum, a public enum. Call it pool object type. And first, we're going to have the attack info. And I want a static method that returns a pooled game object. Call it instantiate prefab. And you want to take in that enum as the parameter. First, I want to start with an empty game object. And depending on the entered object type, the enum, if the parameter is attack info, we want to instantiate that game object. Remember, we already put the attack input prefab under the resources folder. So we can load it using the name here as a game object. And once the object is loaded, we simply return the game object. I'm now going to create another C sharp script. Call it pulled object. Or just pull object. And it's going to have the enum as a public variable. Every prefab that we want to add into the pool is now going to have this script. So I'm going to go into the attack info prefab. And we want to add the script. Let me go back into the object loader. And I want to return the script instead of the game object. So get component from the game object, the pull object script, and return it. I also want a manager that's going to hold on to all the lists of the pulled objects. So I'm going to go into the managers folder and create a pull manager script. And of course, I want to turn this into a singleton. And I want this class to have a dictionary. And the keys are going to be the enum, and each key is going to have a list of all the pooled objects. I'm just going to name it pool dictionary. I want to be able to set up a dictionary. So I'm going to create a method, and I want a list for every enum this should get me every enum in pull object type and for each of the enum if the dictionary doesn't already have the key, then we create a new list.
I want another public method called get object. And I want to be able to get the pull object by specifying just the enum. If this is the first time that the method is called, meaning if there's nothing in the dictionary, then we set up for the first time, and then we look for the object. First, I want to get that list from the dictionary. And I also want to allocate a game object. If there's an object in the list, meaning there's more than zero, I want to get that object and remove that object from the list. If not, I want to tell the loader to instantiate a new prefab. And that's going to be the object that we want. And we now just got to return that object. Once an object is used, I want a method to put it back into the pool. First, I want to get that list. that object into the list. And I also want to turn it off. Now I'm going to go into the attack folder. Control T for the script. And now that we have the pooling system, we're not going to use the instantiate function anymore. Here it is. So the attack info, we're just going to get it from the loader or the pool manager. Okay, object, enter the enum. If there's already a pool of attack info, we're going to get it from the pool. If there's none, then we're just going to create a new object. And I'm going to set it active when we first get it. And I'm going to go down to the deregister part. And instead of destroying it, we're just going to Turn it off. And of course, the pull object is, does not have a turn off method yet. So create a method there called turn off. And whenever this function is called, we want to add it back to the pool. I forgot to turn this into a public method. Okay. Let me save all the scripts. Okay. I'm going to go back to Unity and click play. Let me add another parameter here. And 
and see if that will fix it. Okay, looks good. So if I look at the attack manager, attack info is getting registered and deregistered as I attack. But instead of instantiating attack info every time we attack, we're just using this one attack info from the pool. And whenever more than one attack info is needed, that's when the pool is going to create a new one. Let me try turning on the manual input for the dummy and play again. So whenever two of these are needed, the pool is going to create two. The problem is once the player dies and stops updating, the attack info stays in the attack manager and they're not being added to the pool. Let's fix that. I want to add a fail safe to every pooled object. So I'm going to go in there and I want to create a scheduled routine. I'm just going to call it scheduled off. And depending on the public variable called scheduled off time, I want the object to wait. Wait for X amount of seconds. And after that time, if the dictionary in the manager does not contain this pulled object. In that case, we want to turn this game object off. I'm going to go to the attack info, control T, attack info. And on the event that this game object is being disabled, I want to say that the attack is finished. I'm going to go to the pool object and I want to keep track of the off routine. And every time this object becomes enabled, meaning whenever it's coming out of the pool, if there is a previous routine scheduled to turn this off, we want to we want to stop it because this now has a new owner or this is a new attack. I want to start off a new routine, a scheduled off. But I only want to scheduled off when there is a timing that is specified, which is more than zero. Okay. So let me save. I'm going to go back to Unity and look for the attack info prefab. And I think I'm going to have the scheduled off time to be five seconds. For now, I don't think any attack is going to last more than five seconds. So let me click play again and do the same thing. So even if the player stops updating, the attack info gets turned off after five seconds. Now, before I end this video, I want to go back to the attack script and fix something here. I don't want to remove items from the list while it's iterating. So first I'm going to create a list of attack info that is supposed to be finished. And in the beginning of this method, I want to first clear that list. And for each of the attack info, 
in the current list. If the info is null, which is pretty much the same as what we're doing here, if the info is null or if the info is finished, instead of removing it right away from the list, I want to first add it to the finished attacks. And then once you're done iterating, I want to remove all the info by looking at the list of finished attacks. If the attack manager has that finished attack info, then we just remove every one of them. So essentially we're doing the same thing here, except we're just dividing into two different iterations. Let me look at the pool object. I think there's one more mistake here, which is this. We don't want to put in the attack info here. We just want to put in the variable type. Okay. I think everything looks good. Here inside the pulled objects, we don't have to get it again. The turnoff method is already there. Let's save everything and go back to Unity. I'm going to turn off the manual input for the dummy and click play again. Everything should be exactly the same. Okay, looks good. Now that we have a pooling system, we can not only use this for attack info, but other things like bullets or visual effects, basically anything that happens frequently. And I can go into the loader and add more things into it in the future. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching.